I'd like to just go through some examples of least squares just to orient us to some very basic models that come up all the time. Let's go through the first one, mean only regression. We've already done this, and so I just want to put it back into the context of regular least squares. So our least squares model that we would want to fit is this model right here. We want to approximate my ve our vector in Rn with a constant multiplied, uh, multiplied times Jn, so it puts it into the right dimension. Our result simply says that the parameter fitted value is Jn transpose Jn inverse, which is n inverse, times Jn transpose y, which is the sum of the y's, so we get y bar. So the fitted values, the y hat values, so y hat is going to be the fitted the coefficient times the x matrix, which in this case is just the vector of ones. And so that generates a vector that is nothing other than a bunch of y bars stacked up one on top of another. So that the result is, if we were to calculate the residuals, subtract y minus y hat, then we would get the centered vector y minus y bar done component-wise, and that works out to be that operation right there, i minus the hat matrix with the vector of ones as the, as the vector part of the hat matrix times y. So if you need to mean center a vector, you can do it by that matrix multiplication which is the neat trick I was trying to suggest. So or in other words, multiplication by this matrix, I minus a hat matrix uh, starting from a vector of one, mean centers a, a vector. Also multiplication to a matrix means it's centering the rows or the columns depending on whether you pre-multiply or post-multiply by this matrix. Let's do regression to the origin. We've already developed regression to the origin directly, but let's put it in the context of our least squares result. So we have y minus x beta now, where here the notation is slightly different because I want y in Rn and x in Rn. So x is not a matrix right now, x is a vector, and beta is a scalar. I should have written beta is in R. So let's just verify that our least squares result returns the same result that we got when we developed regression to the origin directly. Well, our beta hat is x transpose x inverse, x transpose y. Well, x transpose x inverse is just the inner product of x with itself in the denominator since it's a scalar, and x transpose y is just the inner product with x and y. So this formula is the same formula when we did regression to the origin by itself. Now let's do linear regression. So now we have a model that has a design matrix with a vector of ones as the first column and a, the, a vector of regression values as the second column. So we could write it out like this, where here x1 is in Rn. So again, we want to minimize that criteria, our least squares criteria. And now our beta is beta naught and beta 1, beta not the intercept, and beta 1 the slope. Our solution to the beta estimates, so our beta hat, is x transpose x inverse x transpose y. In this case, x transpose x inverse is this matrix, jn transpose on top of an x1 transpose times this matrix. Using the rules for multiplication of partition matrix matrices, we get jn transpose jn, times j and j and transpose times x1 in the upper right hand matrix entity x1 transpose times jn and x1 is transpose times x so a 2 by 2 matrix looking like that if i do the arithmetic that's n the sum of the x's the sum of the x's and the sum of the x's squared just using the rules for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix we get the kind of the cross product difference so the these guys multiplied here subtracted off from those guys multiplied there which is summation xi squared and then um, 
you know, you just have to remember the inverse of a two by two matrix to remember it's multiplied times that. And if you don't remember that, just go back and look at cofactors and those sorts of things, that part of linear algebra, or you could just look up on Wikipedia, the inverse of a two by two matrix. But if you look it up on, if you cheat and look it up on Wikipedia, then multiply it times the two, the, the non-inverted matrix to convince yourself. So now let's also look at X transpose Y. That's JN transpose and X1 transpose times Y, which is the sum of the Y's and the sum of the Y's times the X's. Okay. So X transpose X inverse times X transpose Y. We can plug in from our X transpose X inverse formula that we worked on up there and plug into our x transpose y formula that we worked on right there, and we get this determinant term first. But notice the determinant term was also uh, can be related to this shortcut formula for calculating the sample variance. So I so I just wrote it out as n summation x i minus x bar squared. Here's the that matrix just plugging in from up there, and here's x transpose y. Multiplying those two out, I still get this term carried down here. Then when I multiply this matrix times this matrix, I get this guy. And then instead of reading it out loud, I'll ask that you look it up in the notes. But um, we can work with it. It can, it can be simplified. Now, if I were to take this term right here, and write it out as ny bar. There's my ny bar, and there's my summation xi squared. There it is right there. And then I'm going to add and subtract this term, minus y bar summation xi quantity squared, and add it again. And then this final term here is just the term from the matrix up there. Looking, looking at this term, Looking at that term, that is just the shortcut formula for the covariance between two vectors in the numerator of that, so I've just replaced that right there. Now, I can factor the y bar out of these two terms, and that works out to just be the covariance of x with itself. Then this term right here, summation x1i is n x bar, and so if I factor it out there, and I have two of them right here, so if I factor one out there, I can get n x bar, and that summation yi, uh, yi um, times xi, that's that term, and then n y bar x1 bar, that's that term after I've factored out one of the one of the elements of the square there. And again, I, I can rewrite this term as the covariance of x with itself. So, what I wind up with is n covariance of x with itself, n y bar times the covariance of x with itself, minus n x bar times the covariance of y and x, and n the covariance of y and the x term. Now, uh, when I divide this guy by this guy, it goes away, and the n would cancel out with that guy. If I take this and divide it into here, the n will cancel, and the covariance of y and x divided by the covariance of x with itself is beta 1 hat. So I wind up with x bar beta, beta 1 hat. The covariance of y and x divided by this guy will be beta 1 hat. So you can see that you get the beta naught hat and the beta one hat that we had before. So it's a lot of bookkeeping, I would say, but basically we can show with direct use of the matrix algebra that the, the linear regression estimates that we found very simply can be obtained through the least squares estimates. Of course they can be attained, but now we've actually gone through the exercise of doing it. So the broad point is that all the special cases that we've worked out so far 
are exactly the same when you apply them with the Foley squares result. Of course they are, but here we're showing kind of directly how it works out. Here's another simple example. Suppose our x has two groups. A group 1, so a vector that's 1's for n1 elements of y, and another that's 1 for n2 elements. So we might think of, we have a bunch of y measurements on one group and a bunch of y measurements on a second group. I could write this as Jn1, Zn1, Zn2, Jn2, where Zn is a vector of zeros of length n. Let's let mu, instead of writing beta, let's call it mu, mu equal to mu1, mu2, and we want to now minimize the squared norm between y and x mu. Well, mu hat, by our least squares result, is x transpose x inverse x transpose y. So if I were to write out my x transpose x matrix, I could write it out as my in my partition matrix formula there. And if I were to just go through the rules of multiplying out partition matrices, I get this, Jn transpose Jn plus Zn2 transpose Zn2. This, I won't read the whole thing out here, so go through the matrix manipulations and verify. But notice here, Jn transpose Zn1, that's zero, because remember Zn1 is a vector of zeros. Same thing with that, that's zero, because Zn is a vector of zeros, and so on for this one. So we wind up with a diagonal matrix for x transpose x. We have zeros in the off diagonals, n1 and n2 in the diagonal matrices. Then x transpose y, you can multiply that out, and what you get is the sum of the so if I partition my y matrix into the first n measure n1 measurements and the latter n2 measurements then x transpose y is going to be equal to summation of uh, uh, y i from i equal 1 to n1 and summation y i i equal to n1 plus 1 up to n1 plus n2 so the sum from group 1 and then the sum from group two. And I've written it out here. So x transpose x inverse, x transpose y works out to be y bar one and y bar two. So those are a couple of spe special cases to show that least squares is giving us exactly what we know and want it to give us in all these cases that we've worked out otherwise.